What's up, Kevin Davis here with a quick tutorial video on how to use uh, a program called either Audacity or Tenacity, or even if you're on Mac, Saucedacity, and I'll explain the reasons why here in a minute. Uh, this is if you wanna record audio. I'm gonna try to keep this very simple English, so even if you only use a computer to check your email, hopefully you can figure this out because it's really pretty easy. First, what I want to show you though, is you're going to need a microphone obviously for this, unless if your laptop or computer has a really good on-deck microphone, which a lot of MacBooks do, or at least did, I don't know about now. So let me just show you real quick what microphone I got. So I'm on my browser. This is the microphone I got. As you can see, it's only 25 bucks, and it's even cheaper if you apply a coupon right now, which is August 18th, 2023. I was gonna show you through video, but this is even a better picture. <clears throat> this is what you get. And I wanna make this very clear. Literally all you have to do is plug it in and most computers know the rest. You don't need to download software. You don't need to go Google, how do I get my computer to read this? You just plug it in and it's ready to play as soon as you bring up uh, the application you're using to record. So it comes with a USB-C input and you say, wait, I have USB one. Uh, my input does not look like that, so it comes with an adapter. You, you literally just plug it into the back of that adapter, and then you can plug it into the computer. This is what's going to go on your chest, probably on a pocket or something. I'll show you later what buttons to press. And this is for charging. This down here, these two, these two cords right here is for charging. This, the USB-C, the thinner one, plugs into this machine. And then the fatter one, again, plugs into your computer. So if you have like old phone charging things or other things that have the USB, they work for charging. So for example, I preach most Sundays. Most Sundays I'll arrive at the church. I will plug this in and let this charge. And I believe it's yellow until it turns off. That means it's fully charged. And um, I just do it most Sundays as a matter of habit, but I think it has a pretty long lasting life. I've never finished a sermon and said, oh no way, Mike went out in the middle. So, but like I say, as a rule of thumb, usually when I get to the church, I start charging. These are a few things that come with it. And then also you can see there's an adapter even for your iPhone if you wanna record onto your iPhone. For our purposes today though, I'm just gonna show you how to record onto a laptop. Now, I'm gonna have Linux on here. If you use Windows, don't let this scare you. I'll show you how to download the right program for Windows. And I may show some screenshots or screen video from what, I, what you just saw, my Mac, just in case if there's a few of you out there using a Mac. So, it'll be hopefully easy to follow. Okay, I'm on my Linux device on the browser. My son likes Garfield. So we look for Audacity, supposedly in Google. <clears throat> Here is their website. You can go right to their website. And up top here, looks like where it says download. You can download for any um, operating system Windows Mac Linux you can even go to the Windows uh, Microsoft Store the last time I had a Windows device a few years ago and find it so should you use audacity that's the big question over here in the Wikipedia article that's where we get all of our great news here Let's just go and check out the reception of Audacity. And as you see down here, in May of 2021, after the project was acquired by Muse Group, so a different company kind of took over uh, Audacity and, and making it, they had some interesting inclusions. They opted in telemetry, which is collecting data. So you could record application usage. Uh, some users called Audacity in a, sp a spyware. So that was kind of uh, head raising, especially since this is an open source program, meaning that usually it's for free and it's meant to be for everybody and it's meant to be private. Uh, 
So a lot of people got upset about this, even though it seems down here we can read that they kind of backpedaled and said, we're not doing this like we said we would, that sort of thing. Even so, the damage was done. So some other projects, some other programs, uh, took Audacity and made their own. And that's what you can do with open source software. You're able to take it and do what you want with it, which is what people started doing. While I have never used any of the Audacities released by Muse, it's not too scary to me. Like, what other programs, whether, what other things am I using that leaves me more vulnerable than Audacity? Now, if I believe, if you read the very fine print, at least back when Audacity was open and honest about their telemetry, I'm not saying that they're not open and honest now, I have no reason to doubt them, but they said this was in extreme cases where perhaps a crime was committed and maybe somebody was using Audacity at the crime and got a recording. I, you know, I preach sermons. I don't see any problem with using Audacity. If you want to use Audacity, I don't think you're really giving yourself up to any more harm than using a Google phone or an Apple phone or using a, a Microsoft, you know, or using a Google browser. Like all of those things track you. So even so, just because I want to support uh, more individual private uh, programs, I'm using an Audacity fork primarily. It's called Tenacity. So. Here's what Audacity looks like if you download it. That's kind of what the main screen is going to look like. So if you use Audacity, the rest of this program uh, tutorial is going to be just fine. Here is Tenacity, and here's what the inside looks like. I'll just bring it up real quick, and as you can see, pretty much the same screen. Uh, it's just matching my dark theme, but pretty much looks like the same as Audacity right now. If you are on Linux or Windows and want to get Tenacity, you just need to find the Tenacity website. Uh, looks like it's tenacityaudio.org. And it's going to be easiest to download probably on Windows. You got But if you're already using Linux, you hopefully know your way around. Um, I just downloaded Tenacity off Flathub, I believe, so that's easier, and that's another video. But... It should be pretty easy, pretty straightforward to download it from the browser on uh, on tenacity.com. Saustacity for uh, Mac is a little bit trickier. You have to download it from GitHub. I'm not going to show you how to do it. So if you're on Mac and you want to follow this tutorial, you probably won't be doing anything bad if you download Audacity for Mac. So here's my old laptop. This is USB-C. However, I notice on the side, none of them fits. Suppose you only have these ports, regular USB. Thankfully, the adapter comes with the kit. So you just plug the USB-C into the back of this adapter. Now that that's plugged in, plug it into any of your USB ports. And since this is going to be easier for me, I'm gonna plug it in on this side. There is a USB port. Make sure it's the right way. There we go. Now, that's not the only thing you want to do before you open up your program. On the back of this little machine here is a button. See how it's not flashing green? Press the button down. Now it's flashing green. Make sure it's flashing for good or on for good, which it seems to be. Then let us open up our editing software, Tenacity for me here. You might want to open up Audacity and you want to make sure that right after the microphone, says USB composite device. You don't want it anything else except for the USB device, supposing you just plugged in the USB microphone device. Now, to make for easier editing, I'm going to finish this tutorial on my Mac Mini, which is behind me, and also to show you that whether you're using Audacity, Tenacity, Saustacity, they're basically the same program. Suppose you have a Mac Mini like I do, you want to make sure of the same things I have the adapter on. I'm gonna plug it into the back here and I'm gonna make sure this little thing is on. Then we're gonna load up the program and let's get to seeing about the tutorial. Let's bring up Saustacity, which is the MacBook form of I basically Tenacity. Loading it up, as you can see, it doesn't look as pretty on the logo, but it looks about the same here. Again, microphone, 
is USB Audio 1. I'm using the webcam to record my screen here right now, so let's use USB Audio 1. Now, the first thing you notice is you'd say, wait, there's no track. How can I see what I'm saying? So, on your program, you're going to have a top file that looks like this. Let me just bring this up the screen here so we're not entirely distracted. You go to Tracks, Add New, I use mono tracks because usually I'm uploading podcasts. And so depending on what earbud they're listening to, they're going to hear me no matter what. Here's your track. Should be pretty easy if you know if you've ever used a tape player or a CD player. There's a pause button, play, whenever you actually have a track down, stop, a loop, so you're you'll be looping the same audio, skip to start, skip to end, and the record. Notice the little R for record. That means your keyboard, R button, assuming you have the application selected, will start recording. And then stop is usually a spacebar, I believe. Let me just get something to read here so I can show you uh, what a recording looks like. I'm opening up a Bible. I guess that's a trigger alert for some of you. But I'll just read um, Mark chapter 8 a little bit in my Bible in front of me. If you're really curious, it's the NRSV. And let me hit the record here. Mark chapter 8, NRSV. In those days, there was, when there was again a great crowd without anything to eat, he called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion for the crowd. That'll work for our tutorial. Now notice it laid down track. You can see areas where I wasn't speaking, maybe taking a breath, and these are words or audio that is captured. And uh, let me s play this and maybe put the microphone that I'm using for recording next to my speaker. Mark chapter 8 in RSV. In those days, there wa when there was again a great crowd without anything to eat, he called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion for the so, this is actually great, because this is actually whatever I do with video recording, is I don't like it whenever I stutter. Notice, I believe it was in this area. Notice. There was, when there was again, there was, when there was again. So, there was, when there was again. I believe this part right here is the there was. So, I'm holding my mouse button down, scrolling back. I don't like that part. I scrolled back. All I need to do is hit the backspace. That part's gone. Now listen to it. In those days, when there was again a great crowd without anything to eat, he called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion for the crowd. Pretty easy, I hope you think. Uh, sometimes with my sermons, I'll hit the record button, on, but then I have a little bit of time before I get to my pulpit. And so what I do for my sermons is most of the time I'll go through here, delete. So on the podcast, people only have a split second before I'm speaking. I notice also in my sermons, I usually clear my throat. And so I do what I just did. Say if this was my throat clearing, I'll just delete it. And sometimes I'll leave a little space before to give people a time whenever they load up the podcast and they're not immediately hearing a word. So that's just another thing I do. You can do a lot of things with this. Uh, suppose if you're around a fan, if you go to effect, there's noise reduction. Uh, this is going to involve probably a deeper tutorial. But for the simple recording, hopefully I'm giving you an idea of how easy this is to use, especially if you're just recording teaching, preaching, or even a conversation, which you'll probably need a bigger, better mic for. And this is pretty easy to use. Now, Suppose you're done, and you want to save it and start sending it to your friends. File, export, mp3 is the primary audio that people will be able to listen to no matter what device they're on, including a phone. So if you go to export mp3, I'm just going to call this Mark M8 for Mark 8. Uh, let's just put it in my documents. Because I'll delete it in a minute anyways, but I usually keep this standard. Uh, insane means extremely good quality, but you know what? If you're just recording audio, especially talking, you don't need the best 
quality possible. It doesn't sound anything different from what I just heard after I do a standard. I'm going to save. I fill this in, but you don't have to. I just fill this in according to my sermon stuff. Hit OK. And my guess is it went so fast because there wasn't that much to export. So I'll just go look in my documents real quick. Uh, date modified, there it is. And see, it's only 156 kilobytes. That's how quick it was. Mark chapter 8. There it is. In RSV. In those days, when there was again a great crowd without anything to eat, he called his disciples. And I don't know if you heard all that, but it took out that part I took out. So if you want to start a podcast... That's going to require another tutorial. However, if you're just emailing an audio to a few friends, most programs, you usually should just be able to attach a file. For me, this is where the attachment was. I saved it in documents. There it is. So, getting the microphone you need, to downloading the program you need, to simple editing, to sending it to your friends through email. So, I'm not going to be making uh, any more tutorials, probably, for uploading it to a podcast, how to run a podcast, because I'm sure there's a dime a dozen out there in YouTube land. Not to mention, perhaps, tutorials like this I just showed you are probably out there, too. But, I'm hoping that I used simple enough language, simple enough step-by-step, -step to help you out if you want to record anything for your friends. Thanks for watching.